Good afternoon and welcome back. There's been decline in state contribution to research funding at South African universities. Universities South Africa, Youssef, says in its recent report that universities produce public goods to the extent that university education generates new knowledge, produces research that leads to new commercial, technological, social, political and other innovations beneficial for national development. Inversely, university graduates who learned better paying jobs as a result of skill sets that they bring to the labor market reap private goods from university education. The organization says, therefore, if higher education produces both collective public goods and private goods of value to individuals, then it is logical to expect that the funding required for higher education will derive partly from the public fiscus and partly from private investment in the form of student fees or some other mechanism that may be agreed upon over time. To discuss this, we are joined from our Cape Town studios by Minister of Higher Education, Professor Tlingu Mkize. Good afternoon and welcome. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, um, thank you for having me. All right. Minister, what's the importance of having a healthy research budget for public universities? Well, at the moment, uh, we have about 3,3 billion, really, out of the 68 billion earmarked for research. Obviously, if we were to achieve the ideals of a, a knowledge economy, we have to invest more. Some money goes towards science and technology, but still it's not enough. It's really a question of priorities and how universities can be innovative and engage the private sector sometimes to carry out specific research which will benefit both the students and academics but also those industries as well especially in the area of innovation production and the quality of um, the products that they might be researching well funding for research has been dwindling do we have reasons why well, you know, you, you, traditionally the function of an institution of higher learning is to teach, is to do research and to do community service. And of course, you know, Americans, as they say, where you publish or perish, they, they ought to be an old culture of researching amongst academics, which used to be the pride and an honor of being an academic. So those are some of the values which we have to uh, reinstate back. But of all, as, as policymakers, we have a duty and responsibility to avail the, the research grants, make them accessible. I know countries who are doing well, they put huge amounts of money a significant percentage uh, is allocated to researchers. And so we, those are some of the areas where once we have taken care of needy students, making sure that they are accommodated, we have to pay particular attention to because otherwise our students will not be able to benefit from new knowledge as to what skills are needed in the future, what are new products in the markets, how do they position themselves. It's really no longer a luxury, it's an imperative, given that we have a future which is unknown, given the, all the distractions of, te uh, of technologies. Minister, then what is your proposition? I mean, given that uh, the dwindling uh, funding of research at the universities is a matter of concern. And looking at education where many people go towards studying for humanities rather than for technology of science education in those various faculties. What happens then when you want to synchronize skills that can be absorbed in the job market? You know... We, we are beginning to form serious partnerships with the private sector. My view is that besides student placement, we have to engage them as to how do they focus, how do they project, pro, make projections for the future, and, and really appeal to them in terms of partnerships with specific, specific institutions of higher learning. But of course, we know they differ in degrees. There are those institutions who are amongst the top 100, but the historically black universities are the ones which are 
uh, lacking behind, where we have to invest more, as we normally do with uh, infrastructure, and, and have special allocations for d developing research, uh, training, support, and ensuring that uh, people uh, gain confidence. Already the department has put aside some money. Uh, it's not much for a start, just to help them to acquire masters and PhDs, which is en route to helping them being researchers as they engage on postdoctoral uh, studies. Uh, how serious it's really a question... Yeah, Minister, how, how serious does government take the research and innovation that has been released? Every year we have university students graduating in PhDs, but how does government take serious their new and latest innovation and the information from the research that they have derived in as far as taking that and putting it into the entrepreneurial opportunities that are needed in the society? You know, uh our Department of Science and Technology, Trade and Industry, and many other departments in the economic sector, they are looking seriously at possibilities of innovation. Uh, in our case, really, we support those programs by ensuring that at least students who uh, are going to be participating in the programs are supported fully uh, through our uh, available funds. We are looking especially at the skills fund that uh, uh, gradually, especially those who want to be entrepreneurs, they will be supported even through the sitters to be able to come up with concepts and, and to play around. And even our TVET colleges, there are some who are, are, are encouraging innovations so that when people leave, they are able to market their uh, projects and be able to uh, be self-sustaining -sustain or to take them into bigger companies. What kind of provisions are made for research and development when it comes to funding models for universities? You know, besides allocating, as I've said, about 3.3 .3 billion, institutions themselves, within their budgets, they do allocate money for research. But the point which we are all looking at is that it's not enough. But also, it's more than money. For research throughput, you really need a culture of ensuring that for whatever modules you are teaching, you come up with research topics, uh, academics working with their students and helping them to learn to present and to question, question all the time. It's, it talks to the heart of quality education. So it's not something which we can put on the side, but w I, I still think the 68 billion is the highest amount of money. In, in, for instance, in our government that uh, are put aside for university education. And we have no reason not to, within that, to create a consciousness of recession, questioning, 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 and of course systematically coming up with solutions, evidence-based uh, solutions. And our universities can partner with any of the sectors and help them with the solutions they require. In that way, enhance their research skills. Minister, on a parting short, given that the Department of Higher Education is faced with the challenge of free higher education, so given that funding is a challenge, are we going to see this affecting the side of research and development? You know, the students have come up with the hashtag FISMAS fall. They look at one aspect. And I, I think we should just talk about it as an opportunity to really repositioning our, repositioning our youth for a better future through knowledge economy. And we, as I've said, traditionally, you don't have to separate the core functions of the university, which is education, research, and of course, relevant socioeconomic impact community service as now as we used to call it but now it's looking at whatever you do must have impact at a community level so it's not a question of one area being in competition with another the the call for support for students while fully while they're in universities i think is legitimate 
it's our responsibility because we have this inclusive agenda. We don't want anyone deserving student to be left out, mainly because it comes from a family which cannot afford to put them through. That is not in competition with the research prospects. It's the culture and the mindset which has to develop, especially in partnership with the private sector. Minister, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for having me. Coming to us live from our Cape Town studio, Professor Shengwem Kize, talking about funding for research and development at universities.